Hey everyone, welcome to Automotive Diagnosis YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, starting system and I'm going to focus on uh, a starter solenoid, this part on the starter motor. And on the uh, starter solenoid, I will be talking about uh, holding and pulling coils because as you guys may know, there are two coils or two windings inside the starter solenoid. That obviously is really important to know how uh, those two coils work and how to inspect them, just to make sure if solenoid is working properly uh, or not. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna explain the wind diagram for this, and I'm gonna show you how to test the uh, pulling and holding coils using the multimeter and I'm going to show you how to use it with the battery by providing the positive and negative how we can test the solenoid operation. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, just a quick explanation about the solenoid operation. So this is a solenoid on the starter. So, so as you see, we have normally three terminals on here and this one should be installed just right here okay so we have three terminals uh, this terminal is connected to the starter relay so it means when you try to crank the engine uh, a starter relay is going to provide the battery positive to here between these two terminals this one is connected to the battery and this one is going to go directly to the starter motor, all right? And behind these two, we have a contact switch. So it means when, when you turn the ignition switch to a start position, when a starter relay is energized, uh, inside the solenoid, this is the solenoid. Inside the solenoid, you have two coils, as I said earlier. So those two coils will be energized and they will create a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is going to be enough to pull this plunger in. This plunger is inside. There should be one spring in there as well. So, so when a uh, solenoid is energized, it's going to pull this plunger in. Okay. So when the plunger moves in, if you look at the, if you look inside the solenoid, that button, that is connected to the contact switch. So it, that button is going to push the contact switch toward these two and it's going to connect these two together so it's going to actually pass the battery power from here to the other terminal and right away to the starter so this is how uh, solenoid works but if uh if those two coils inside the solenoid if they don't work properly Obviously, solenoid is not going to work properly as well, and you won't be able to start the car. So we have two coils. If one of them is not working, the magnetic field at the beginning is not going to be strong enough to pull the plunger in. Okay, so no cranking at all. But if one of them, if for example, if holding is not working properly, you may have some situation that plunger is going to move in. Okay, but is not it's not gonna stay in position to keep the starter engaged, okay? It's gonna, it's gonna get disconnected and it's gonna go back to the original position, which is gonna uh, uh, disconnect the starter. So what we have here for more understanding, uh, I have the starter solenoid wind diagram right here. And as you see, this part is the starter solenoid. And the reason that in this diagram, a starter motor is smaller than a solenoid because you have uh, some details in here that the manufacturer wanted to uh, actually show in a better view. That's why you have the starter solenoid in uh, bigger scale in here. So on the solenoid, you have three terminals. This is the first one, which is coming from the starter relay. This is what I call it S terminal. And this one is coming from the battery. This is the contact switch that I explained earlier. This one is actually the plunger, and this is the main output to the motor. So if I explain right here, this S terminal, which is coming from the uh, starter relay, is actually 
this one uh, battery connection on here and the last one right there is the main output to the motor and the ground is the whole body as you see the whole body of this component is is the ground so what we have here uh, this one between these two windings or between these two coils the first one right here this one is holding coil all right which is connected between the s terminal and the body so it means if i show you this one all right so this is the s terminal which is right here and the body is going to be ground all right so it means one end of the holding coil is connected to here the other end is connected to the body so it means if I check the resistance between these two points, I'm going to measure the resistance of holding coil. Okay. And what about for the other one? So obviously the other one, this one is pulling coil. And for the pulling coil, one end again is connected to here. And the other end is going to go right after the contact switch. Okay, toward the main output to the starter. So this is the S terminal coming from the relay. And this is the main output uh, to the motor. It means the one end of the pulling is connected to here. The other end is connected to M terminal, to the main output. So how these coils are going to work? Right after you... Uh, crank the engine you try to crank the engine a starter relay will be energized so you have the starter relay in activated position and the battery voltage from here is going to go uh, toward the uh, starter solenoid right so you have the battery positive right here and negative is the ground so this coil is going to get energized so you have the magnetic field created by this one by holding what what about the pulling the pulling for the pulling we have positive on this end and the other end is going to go all the way from here and it's going to get the ground from the motor okay so this one is getting the ground from the motor and the positive from here so this one is going to be energized as well so these two coils both of them are energized right now and they're going to create a strong magnetic field to pull this plunger in right and right after plunger moves, these two will be connected to each other because of the contact switch. And this is the contact switch as you see here, this is a plunger. When contact switch is connected because of the plunger movement, we have this connection, right? These two, these two terminals are gonna get connected to each other. So what's gonna happen? The bat battery positive from here is gonna travel all the way through the switch, through the motor, right? So you will have the positive in here on the motor and the ground on here the motor is going to operate but there is something else there is something else is going to happen as well which is before you have this contact switch connected the pulling winding was getting the ground from the motor but right now because this contact switch is connected here turns to positive so you have positive on at this end of the coil and positive at the other end of the pulling coil as well. So it means the pulling coil is not gonna work anymore. Okay, so pulling coil is not gonna work anymore and the only coil which is working right now is holding coil. Because at the very beginning for pulling the plunger in, we need a strong magnetic field. That's why we activate both coils. But right after connecting this contact switch, we uh, de-energize the pulling coil because we're going to use this current for the starter itself that's why we de-energize the pulling coil by just turning both sides of the uh, pulling winding to positive and the only coil which is going to be working is going to be hold in which is not going to consume that much current anymore and uh, is going to uh, provide more current to the starter motor to uh, crank the engine so technically if you measure the resistance between the s terminal and body you're going to measure the resistance for uh holding winding okay 
And what about for the pulling? For the pulling, one end is connected to the S terminal and the other end goes all the way to M terminal for, for the motor, so which is right here. So if I measure the resistance between S terminal and this one, I'm gonna measure the resistance of uh, pulling winding. Select the resistance. And as we talked earlier, for inspecting the holding winding, I'm gonna put one prop on solenoid S terminal and the other end on the body. And this is the value, around 1.2, 1.3. If what you are measuring is zero, it means uh, holding winding is shorted, shorted to the ground, shorted to the body. But if your measurement is way high, if it is infinite, it means there's open circuit in the uh, holding winding. So what about for the pulling? Once again, if you remember the wind diagram, as I told you, for the uh, pulling winding, one end is connected to the battery S terminal. The other end to here, which is gonna go, which is the output of the solenoid to the motor, which is M terminal, right here. So this time I'm gonna measure the resistance between a solenoid S terminal, which is right here, and M terminal right there, and see what is the value I'm gonna get. All right, and this is the value that I'm getting right now. So same story, if you are getting uh, zero resistance, uh, it's already shorted. If you are getting a higher resistance, it means it's uh, open. All right, guys, I'm trying to uh, provide the positive and negative to check the uh, pulling and holding winding uh, on this starter. So this is gonna be my positive on uh, solenoid S terminal. And I should give the negative to the body so the whole starter is gonna have the ground. But at the same time, I need to provide another ground to this one M terminal which is the output from the uh, solenoid to the starter motor. And this is just for, uh, for the beginning to energize the uh, pulling winding as well. So right after providing the ground to the body and ground to uh, this terminal and obviously having the positive on S terminal, I should have this pinion moving this way toward uh, the flywheel. And later on, if pinion moves, it means solenoid is working properly for this and holding and pulling windings are working properly as well. And right after that, I'm gonna disconnect the negative from here, from M terminal to inactive the pulling winding. And I should see that this pinion stays in place if holding winding is working properly. But if I disconnect the ground from here and the pinion moves back, it means the holding winding is not working properly. Okay, let's start. All right, my ground is there and I use this one to uh, uh, to provide the ground from here to M terminal as well. Okay, so this one is giving the ground to the body and this cable from here is gonna give the ground to M terminal as you see I'm uh, just putting the ground right here and uh, this one is my positive okay so I'm gonna provide the voltage and see what's gonna happen uh, to this pinion all right pinion already moved it means the coils are working properly I'm gonna disengage the pulley by disconnecting this ground. And as you see, pinion is still in place, so it means the holding winding is working properly as well. And as soon as I disconnect the power, pinion moved back to the place, it means the plunger spring is working properly as well to push the plunger uh, out of the solenoid to disconnect the uh, main switch right here.